I started dealing with pornography and masturbation from as early on as maybe eight years old. Lo and behold, I come across naked people doing things. I say, whoa! Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Samantha Ivancek and if you are not following me, please kindly subscribe first before we even get into this video. Okay, so I'm going to be doing my hair and my makeup and be telling you my story of how I dealt with addiction because I put out a post on my Instagram, told people to send me questions and someone sent me a question saying, I really need Jesus in my life and my addiction is taking over me. I have lost focus. Addiction was something that I really struggled with for the longest time before I accepted my work with God seriously. And I decided that why don't I just talk about it because I realized that I've never really spoken about addiction like that on my channel. And I think it would just be the best thing to talk about right now just to help that person and help anyone that may be going through addiction. I started dealing with pornography and masturbation from as early on as maybe eight years old because I think one of the things that was happening was that I was exposed to pornography very early. So you know how you have those uncles that come to your house to see your mom or something and I remember one time I was playing with one of the uncle's phones. I was curious, I was a child. So I was bored right and then I was like okay what can I do to keep myself engaged. I was searching through my uncle's phone lo and behold I come across naked people doing things. I say whoa what is this ha? Huh? I was very confused. I was totally lost. I was like, what is this? Why are these two people naked? That uncle kept coming around so, and me. I kept thinking before. I wonder why. I'm sure that uncle was very confused on why I would carry his phone to the toilet for extended periods of time and not come out. I kept on doing that, right? And so that definitely, I would say that has a big part to stirring the desire for porn, right? In my heart as a young child. I found myself at a young age starting to get addicted to masturbation. And the worst part about it was that I couldn't talk to anybody about it. Now, let me tell you a funny story. I was a Catholic and in the Catholic church, you confess your sins to a priest. If you do something wrong, you have to confess your sins to a priest. So, I remember one day, and this was like after I finished secondary school, mind you, I've been dealing with these addictions for years. It will come and go. There will be seasons where I wouldn't feel it as much, maybe when I'm in school, I'm in boarding school or something, and then I come home and I'm bored, and then that's again, it's like a whole spiral. So, I remember this time I was in, at home and had masturbated, right, and watched pornography, and I felt so guilty. And usually, the priest would come, like, usually, you can see the priest on Saturday morning, or you can see the priest on Sunday in my church then, Holy Trinity. And I remember I ran, that was just a big deal. I took, mind you, I don't know if take taxi by myself at that time. It was when I was like, still a teenager, I was like, probably like 16 or 15. I literally took a taxi, I had money on me, took a taxi to Catholic Church to go and tell the Father my sins. So yes, definitely, like I felt really guilty. I confessed to the Father. And normally you do those kind of emergency confessions when you feel like you're about to die. So me, I just don't want to play tricks with God. May not come be like, say the day that I decide to do this, the day that rapture decides to come. And then I'm like, God, I beg. It was a mistake. God, I didn't knew. I know I'll play those kind of jokes. No be me, no be me, no be me. Sorry. And behold, I can remember the expression of the Father's face like, this girl, you could have waited to Saturday while. Because I don't think it was ridiculous. It was like a Thursday and maybe Saturday was like two days after or something. He was just so confused. I just confessed and then I told him what I had been dealing with. And, or, and then I went back home. My guilt was cleared. Thank God I know better now. So fast forward, this was when I was 15, 2014 when I had graduated from secondary school, I took a gap year. So definitely I was bored, I didn't have much to do. I would stay at home, dealing with the addictions. It would happen, I would cry. It would happen, I would cry. It would happen, I would cry. I was literally in bondage. I felt stuck and I felt like I didn't even know what step to take. I was kind of like in this limbo. I just got tired of dealing with it, right? And I remember like feeling so frustrated and just feeling like, God, would this actually ever stop? Would I get to the point where I don't have to ever experience this addiction in my life again? And it was just constantly feeling condemned so now I go to uni right and I'm thinking ah, I'm gonna be a uni baby I'm not gonna deal with this again it's like oh that way the thing will go increase fast that is where the full force came out because first of all I was now like free I had my own room so definitely I was not under anybody's control I could do things by myself which made it worse for me because I had more liberty to do whatever I wanted to do it became more apparent to me that I needed to stop it in school because the thoughts it was the condemnation was getting worse guilt and the shame that came with it was getting worse and then obviously I had just got to school I wanted to go to parties I wanted to do those things that I knew that in Nigeria I couldn't do because I schooled in Hungary but by that time God had already started speaking to me I already started having 
having this inclination towards God, I started having this strong desire that I couldn't explain. Let's say I'm worshiping and I start crying and I'm just like, what's happening here? I don't understand any of this. And there was really no one to talk to. Church that I attended in school, I remember I went there and there was a friend of mine, now she's my friend, but then she was my friend. I saw her, she was speaking in tongues, she was rolling on the flight, saying, how are you people should do in this church? Because I mean, from a Catholic background, we don't do like this. We do, hey Mary, we do our father, we do glory be, and then we go to we go to our houses, okay? She was rolling, she was speaking in tongues, I said, ha ha. I said, this is not me, I don't want to do this. But what made me stay was their worship. Oh, it was so beautiful. I will never forget how beautiful their worship was. So that I went home and I kept worshiping. Like I just, I didn't understand how to speak in tongues, how to pray in tongues or anything. To make matters worse, one day after, like I just finished masturbating, I went on YouTube. I said, let me check on something that will edify me into stopping. Lo and behold, <laughs> I watched this video by this woman talking about how anybody that masturbates, hellfire will burn them. How God would use hellfire to scatter their head. How they would die. How they, if they watch pornography, you're a sinner. You are a dead. You are a condemned to death. Everything, everything. Boy, 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 to finish you. Here, fear caught my heart. I said, God, is this me? How will I do this? But Funny enough, eh, that video scared me so much that I think that a part of, I would not lie, that video had a part of me, like, I won't say it, have a, it, it didn't have a part to me stopping in the long term, but it just scared me for that moment. But coincidentally, that was around the time where I started worshipping God a lot. I started spending time with God. I started fellowshipping with God, like, more. I didn't even know what I was doing. I would just spend half, like, extended periods where I was spending time with God, where I was fellowshipping with God, where I was worshipping God. I didn't even realize the correlation, but little by little, the desire started to reduce. All of a sudden, that desire to masturbate wasn't as much. That desire to watch pornography wasn't as much. It wasn't even, like, a switch or, like, there was this immediate, like, this is all over kind of situation. It was just like, little by little, the things I started to do, like worshiping God more. I then I couldn't even speak in tongues, so I would just sit down in my bedroom, talk like I'm talking to a person, and just do those things. It wasn't like an immediate thing. The desire I started reducing, the stronghold it had on me wasn't there as much. And I think this now brings me to dealing with this kind of addiction, masturbation, and dealing with pornography that not a lot of people talk about. People don't like to identify with the fact that this is something that they probably had in their past so that others can see freedom. And for me, it's not something I am ashamed of because I know where I'm coming from. I know how hard it was for me to deal with something like that. I know how difficult and how alone I felt because people my age were not, not talking about it as much on YouTube. Christ died for you. The Bible says that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That means that you do not have fear. You have the spirit of a sound mind. That word sound mind means a spirit of of self-control so the holy ghost in you gives you the capacity to be able to get free from addictions it is not you in yourself it is the holy ghost in you like i said which is why i had to tell the story of how i dealt with this for years and it was the point where i started spending more time with god that i had to actually see results it wasn't as a result of my own personal effort that i said ah today i'm stop ah today i'm stop ah today i'm stop no when i took my eyes off me and i focused on jesus was when things started changing i think a lot of times people that deal with addiction you're so focused on stopping the addiction as opposed to being focused on Jesus. When you're focused on stopping the addictions, do you know what you're actually just focused on? You're focused on yourself. And do you know somebody else that was focused on themselves and they got this inside trouble? Peter. With the story of Peter when he walked upon water, people usually think that Peter's problem was that he took his eyes off the of Jesus. Yes, that was his problem. But Peter's main problem was actually the fact that he took his eyes off Jesus and focused on himself. It wasn't that he focused on the wind. It wasn't that he focused on the storm. Him looking at the wind and falling into the water was actually him focusing on himself because he was looking at what his capacity can do, not what Jesus' capacity can do. When you're dealing with addictions, if you try your best to stop it by yourself, because what I mean by this is, how do you know that you're trying to stop it by yourself? When you're, you feel like it's a do or die matter, I have to stop, I have to stop now, I must stop now, I must stop now, and you're trying every gimmicks and tricks in the books to try to stop. Let me just be honest with you, they are going to fall so hard. So what? Hard. Because what you must understand is that it is not in yourself to save yourself, it is Christ who saves you. So one of the strongest ways to be able to say, ah, God, I need to stop this, I know I need to stop this, is to spend time with God. See, there is no faster way in the, in the history of stopping addiction than this. It may not happen immediately, but I promise you, over time, if you spend consistent time with God, consistent devotion with God, if you stop trying to make it a 
90 day routine or make it a 60 day routine let me just stop the service for 12 days and i'll be fine and you actually spend quality time with god you actually put yourself in a local church you actually surround yourself with believers you actually listen to sermons every day fill your minds with the right thing you actually um spend time pray with jesus listen to worship music I promise you, you will start to see that desire lessen and lessen because you're stirring up yourself in the spirit. But the Bible says that when you spray the Holy Ghost, you build up yourself. Now, the second one would definitely be consecration. Consecration just means to set yourself apart for something. So you must understand that your mind is a sponge and whatever you feed it, it will soak. If you are saying you are dealing with masturbation and pornography and all of these things and you're like, oh, but I'm not watching porn anymore, but you see that movie on Netflix? That movie on Netflix that there are a lot of sex scenes, there are a lot of um, things that you know will stir your appetite because it's an appetite. If you dangle meat and chicken in front of your nose and it's smelling very delicious, even if you're not hungry, you want to eat it. So it's the same way that if somebody should dangle sexual appetite in front of you, even if let's say you are not in the mood or anything, you will start to be stirred up. Do you understand? So it's very counterproductive for you to say you want to stop addiction and yet you are still dealing with it. You are still watching movies that have a lot of sex scenes. You are still listening to songs that all they are talking about is how they want to shake their bum bum. i say, uncle, calm down. Calm down. I don't know what you are dealing with. If you do not put your mind on the right things, my dear, you will fall. You will fall so hard that you will not be, you will be surprised how did I get here. Even when you're free from the addiction, if you don't learn to be disciplined with what you watch, disciplined with what you hear, disciplined with what you read, but uh, you go fall back inside, you'll be shocked. Even 20, 20, 10 years, 20 years, you'll be like, how did I get back here? Three would be friends. Having good community of friends and being accountable to somebody. I will not lie to you, oh my God, this particular thing, it was, see, it has saved my life. It has what saved my life. Every time then when I was dealing with addictions and even now when sometimes I have a desire and it's hard and I'm just like, because let me first of all say the sexual desire is not a bad thing. Sexual desire is given by God, but it's confined to marriage. <laughs> Hallelujah, see wisdom. I say sexual desire is given by God, but it's confined to marriage. My friend would always say, the marriage belt is to be remained on the file. <laughs> so, sexual desire is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. You must understand that it's okay for you to feel these desires. Now, the question is, what do you do with the desires? So, in this case, for example, you are having sexual desires. You want to masturbate or you want to watch pornography and all of these things. You must understand that that is not what God will intend you to use your body with. So, you must have people that you are accountable to. People that you can tell this thing to. So, before you do it, when you think about the fact that ah, I have to tell this person this thing, Shame will catch you. Now say, ah, I cannot do this to myself. No. You must have people you are accountable to. I have friends that when I'm feeling this kind of way, I call and be like, ah, babes, I beg, they feel this kind of way. Like, or I'm like, my girl, this is what's happening. There was a time where I was having a lot of desires and it just felt like an attack, to be honest. There was like just so much desire, sexual desires and all. Because trust me, when you're trying to stop, the enemy will bring a lot of, like times where you would have not even felt that way. The enemy will start to bring desires and thoughts and different things and if you're not careful you will just fall back but i had a friend that i would call then and i would stay on the phone with her like for a long time just to make sure that i don't get myself into that fix you have like a pastor a mentor that you're keeping accountable to i have a i have a i have a pastor a female pastor that a female a female pastor you not gonna tell your male pastor say you're dating this kind of place or don't say something that put you inside trouble no Male to male, female to female, because ah, if you don't know, you go and tell somebody, somebody will not stay and that person's desire up. We don't want to go and do the place. No, 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 no. Look at this fine girl. Yeah. You know that if I'm dealing with this thing, I know I can call this person and this person would like listen to me, hear me out and advise me. Something that is really important that I feel like you need to really do is have a hobby. See, get busy. I don't mind this the devil's workshop. I will not lie, it's very true. You need to make sure that you actually have like something that you are doing. If not, you are so going to fall. Like I'm not saying, I'm not even saying that there are no times you can be idle. I'm saying for the first stage is when you are dealing with getting free from this thing. You need to make sure that you have something that you are doing. You need to make sure that you are busy. Because if you're not busy, the enemy will just take it as opportunity to fill your mind with something. Which is why the first thing I mentioned was staying close to Jesus, focusing on Jesus, listening to sermons. Because in Christ is where the freedom actually is. I will tell you something, you can stop addictions outside of Christ before it's hard. 
when you have Jesus, it's much easier. Hey, Jesus, that's it, Dave. Now it's it. A natural hair given or what? So, yes, you need to make sure that you fill your mind. Read books. Get busy. Don't stay idle. Learn a skill. Do something productive. It helps you get your mind off that. I will say these are my steps. And one thing I want to point out, right, is that you can fall again. See, when you understand that you can actually fall again, like even if you get rid of it, chances are that you can actually fall again. It helps you take serious measures to make sure that you don't fall back on your steps. Like nobody said you have to get it right in the first trial. Like you, you are a human being. That is why Christ died for you. You are bound to make mistakes, but you're not meant to give up. Even if you fall, even if it means that you try it hundred times and keep failing, keep doing it because God never created you to give up. But I promise you, if you actually do these steps, there is no way in this world that you still deal with addictions. It is a sure way to make sure that you're free from addictions. Give a little bit of red mistake in church today. Red for the color of the blood of Jesus. A good book that you can read on this is Breaking Free by Joy Essien. I'll send it to you. She's my, actually my mentor, my pastor. She will see that book does wonders it gives you step to steps on how to deal with addictions and all of these things and i really do feel like that book is very good as i said before you can still fall but it's not because you fall that you feel like all your efforts have gone down the drain no even if you fall those efforts still count for something and it only means that you're getting better you would get better and get better even if you fall you've done those things in the past so you know how to pick yourself up again like just because you failed at something doesn't mean that everything that you did in the past counts for nothing. One thing I had to learn that just because I'm condemning myself doesn't mean that God is condemning because the Bible says, therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So God is not condemning you, so you shouldn't condemn yourself too, right? So, you know my final look for church, yeah. I think I'll insert my final look once I'm dressed up. Well guys, thank you so much for joining me as I did my makeup and I tell you about my addiction story. Please make sure that you subscribe, like this video so that you can move I beg, like it, what are you doing? It's more like you cannot like. So please like the video, subscribe, comment under your own addiction stories and how God set you free so that others can be encouraged. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a lovely day and bye. Let me just pose, that's so cute. Hey.